Hello, so it's uh, been a little while since we put any video content out. We haven't done a much video for a little while. Uh, purely down to being so busy. It's been such a, a warm few weeks. Uh, really been up to sort of 30 degrees air temperature, hasn't it, for the last few weeks, which has meant we've uh, been very busy whacking out the orders, um, which is great. But it also has meant that I've had to do pretty unsociable hours um, to use the cooler air at night to help cool the pellets. So obviously the, it means the cooler has to work twice as hard to, uh, if we're using the warm air that we've had, say 27, 28 degrees on some days, to cool those pellets, especially in this building, it probably gets a little bit warmer than that. So uh, I've had to work through the nights using the cooler air um, to get these pellets made, but that doesn't necessarily mean I, I get a shorter day of, of daylight hours because we still have lorries and things turning up, phone calls to answer and uh, lots of admin to get on top of. So it's been very unsociable hours. I've probably been a very grumpy boy for the last few weeks, but. Uh, We've got lots of pellet out the door and uh, it seems to be going really well, fish are growing really well. And uh, yeah, to be honest, when it's this warm, although I say that today and, and, and yesterday has been pretty, pretty wet and rainy and we've had some pretty vicious downpours of rain over the last couple of days. Um, so yeah, it's given me this little break, so I thought oh, I'll give you a little update of uh, what we've been up to. We are still here, we are still making feed and uh, sorry I've not done any uh, video content for a little while but I'm hopefully planning over the next couple of days to uh, to do a bit of informative content and, and a bit some bits and pieces but uh, yeah what I was going to go on to say there is uh, when it is as warm as this and whilst uh, you know water temperatures would have been up above sort of 20 20 degrees 20 sometimes up to 25 degrees in some places I'd imagine which uh, at those temperatures the fish are digesting their diet very very efficiently so you might, although you might get away with, uh, you know, if you fed a top spec diet, those fish are really utilizing all those nutrients in a, in a high protein fish meal and fatty uh, diet. Although on the flip side, we've had very low water turnover. So it's been very dry and the land drains, particularly in my ponds, have really dried up. So we're not getting that water to dilute any pollutants and the things start to accumulate this time of year because it has been so dry. Whereas in the winter, you've obviously got a lot of water coming through the ponds. So any pollutants are being diluted very quickly. Um, so having lost that water turnover, we really need to look after water quality. So whilst fish are feeding very hard, they're converting their diet very efficiently this time of year. I'm actually backing off the feed, believe it or not. So the last couple of weeks I've been feeding about 1% every other day, just because it has been so warm and the fish are really up in the t upper layers. The oxygen and, and algal blooms are, are very aggressive. So you can get quite large fluctuations in oxygen through the day. So I'm really trying to protect what's going on in the pond because the more feed you're putting in, the more bacterial processes are going on to break down that feed and the feed wastes once the, once the fish have, have uh, fed on that feed and digested that feed. And there's lots of oxygen being used to digest that food. So the bacterial processes are really active in breaking everything down. And I want to keep everything as consistent as possible. Because you need to remember that the feed season is a marathon rather than a sprint. It doesn't mean, right, the water temperature's well up now, let's get the food into them, bang, 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 get loads and loads of food in. It's not like that. It's, it's, it's about getting your, growing, your growth over uh, the, the whole growing season, over the six month period that we have, hopefully, if uh, we get a long enough summer because we had a bit of a delayed start with the cold spring. But yeah, that would be my comment at this time of year when it is this warm. Just back off the feed a little bit, keep an eye on your, your oxygen because if you are contributing to a water quality issue because the water is very warm, everything's happening very fast. If you have a period of very low oxygen, um, a real harsh oxygen crash and the fish start gasping, that's a very stressful period for that, those fish. So they could pick up secondary infection, they could pick up more parasites that are taking advantage of those lethargic, lethargic fish that have a weakened uh, immune system. So these are all things that if you went in hard with the feed when it's, although the environment is, is uh, ideal for the fish to digest that diet, you could be creating a scenario for fish stress and then the secondary infection and then nightmares for the rest of the growing season. So we don't want to compromise the rest of the growing season just for that little window that's warm and means the fish can digest their diet very efficiently. So yes, yeah, so that's one thing that I definitely keep in mind at this time of year. It's also in the feed guide about uh, water temperatures um, to feed less if it's below a certain temperature, but actually if the water temperatures get above a certain temperature, I'd also feed less. So you're trying to keep that balance right and keep everything healthy in the pond and leave those fish, keep everything as consistent as possible. And uh, also a couple of weeks ago, we had a look, at, um, just did a sample net on one of the pond, ponds, one of my ponds here on the farm, to see how the C2s are doing, because uh, when they go in at a certain weight, you expect them to reach 
you know, 10 times that weight, weight in their second year. They grow really fast in the C2 stage. They seem to really fly. So I just wanted to check up on them so I can recalculate my feed rations. So that's what we did a couple of weeks ago. We popped down the ponds with the net, just did a quick sweep in the morning. We did it first light because it was so warm during the day. We didn't want to be stressing those fish at the peak times of uh, when the, the water temperature at the highest. We just wanted to get it done in the day and for us as well because it was such a hot day we wanted to be done nice and early so we got down there real early oxygen was good check the oxygen in the morning uh, to make sure that everything's going to run fluently and just so we can have a quick sweep a quick sample see how they look and uh, get the sort of rough um, average size then recalculate the biomass of the pond and then recalculate the feed ration to make the most of the next maybe six to eight weeks of the growing season we might have um, so yeah we had some cameras with us and uh, have a look see how we got on So I'm sure you'll agree there's some absolute beautiful fish coming on through the ponds at the moment. That was only one C2 pond that we looked at that day. So uh, yeah, really excited to see how they do for the rest next part of the growing season. We've still got probably six to eight weeks left of the growing season. So uh, hopefully we can squeeze a little bit more growth out of them before we go into the winter. And uh, yeah, they're looking immaculate, especially with we've been putting a lot of match pad in our feed this year. Obviously last year was uh, when we were starting to develop it and it was obviously clear to see that fish really liked it. And uh, this was really a, sort of a good year to test the uh, natural power because that pond had a lot of C2 fish in it. And I just wanted to see what the parasite load is like, how, if they got any leech or argulus on them. And uh, just to see if that natural power is working as well as we hoped it to, because in the past we've had, uh, we've, we've not had much of an issue of argulus um, because our stocking densities, are, we keep low. We, have, we don't have any snags or any uh, particular refuge for fish to hold up in. So the, the parasites don't tend to thrive very well in our ponds. Our fish are kept very active and fed every day, so they're moving around. They're, very, they're a much harder target for these parasites. So uh, it, this year with, with that C2 pond, I knew there's a lot of fish in there. Um, and as they grow, the, the biomass is really multiplying very quickly. So um, I just wanted to be sure that the, the natural is doing its job and uh, that there's no argulus and, and leech starting to come on and take advantage of that high stocking density. But all look really well. I'm sure you'll agree those fish look absolutely immaculate. And like I say, um, Fingers crossed now I can uh, go back and recalculate the feed ration and really take advantage of this, this end of the growing season because uh, I have seen some long range forecasts that we could be getting another hot August, similar to the last couple of weeks. So, uh, But how reliable a long range forecast is, is anyone's guess. So uh, hopefully you're all doing well and uh, having a good growing season and uh, I promise to bring you more content over the next couple of weeks. And uh, sorry, I've been a bit on the quiet side the last uh, last few weeks but it's been very very busy and uh, yeah thank you for your business and keep us posted with your progress.